We've been told repeatedly and with great confidence that the future of electric vehicles would be decided almost entirely by lithium. Who controls it? Who refines it? Who can extract it cheaply enough? And also, who can persuade investors to uh, that there will be plenty of it to go around uh, for quite a long time? Lithium became, I think, not just a material, but a kind of assumption. And about halfway through this video, you'll basically know what you wanted to know, I think, you know, from what CATL said a couple of weeks ago at their supplier conference uh, about the rollout of sodium ion chemistry this year. So rather quietly, CATL did something really, really interesting. In November, they started to produce in small scale, but nevertheless, they did put it into production, their sodium batteries. And from 2026, CATL plans to deploy sodium ion batteries at genuine industrial scale, not as a novelty either, but as a working technology intended for real vehicles and real storage systems and real supply chains. Sodium, uh, it must be said, it's not thrilling. I think that's, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because it's interesting because it's a bit dull and it won't set on fire or do anything ridiculous. So it's not exotic at all. It doesn't come wrapped in any sort of geopolitical intrigue or anything like that or controversy. It's the sort of thing that I think one associates with a kitchen cupboard rather than a clean room. And that, rather wonderfully, is the point. So sodium is abundant. It's very, very cheap. It doesn't require complex global mining arrangements, relatively speaking, anyway. Obviously, you'll need more than a bloke or two blokes with a shovel or, uh, you know, any sort of delicate diplomatic balancing acts. And crucially, it behaves rather well in cold weather, which is obviously its, it's, its big selling point, I think, one of its two big selling points. A quality that lithium batteries have historically struggled with, uh, to manage with, uh, with much grace. So CATL has been developing sodium ion chemistry for a few, literally just several years, you know, in a meaningful way. And they've already sort of boosted the density from 120 to 40 to 175, which puts it above the blade battery, for example. So it's an interesting thing. A few years and they've kind of cracked it and we can start using it. So their next generation sodium ion cells approaching 175 watt hours per kilo. That is still below lithium ion phosphate, which can now be over 210 watt hours per kilogram, but it's close enough to matter once you factor in cost and safety and durability. So it's definitely satisfactory, good enough. So I also think it's be gonna become a bit of a, it's gonna set the, the, the cost base for the cheaper end of the market. I think it's gonna really help with that. These batteries tolerate extreme temperatures. They remain stable in heat. They're far less prone to thermal runaway. They avoid reliance on lithium or cobalt or uh, nickel. And the very materials that have made battery pricing such a persistent headache over uh, the last, I'm going to say 20 years actually. Crucially, CATL is not claiming that sodium ion is going to replace lithium. Instead, what they've actually said and how they frame this is as a dual track future, which I agree with. Lithium ion remains the choice where energy density is paramount. Sodium ion steps in where cost or safety or longevity, predictability matter for like energy storage, for example, on a grid or I don't know, maybe trucks or something. So this is where the December 2025 supply conference in a place called Ningde, I think you call it Ningde, but becomes very, very important at that conference uh, held in CATL's home city. And uh, yeah, and at attended not by journalists, by the way, but by suppliers and partners, industrial customers and some investors. The company laid out its roadmap basically at that event and with unusual clarity actually. And this was not a consumer launch and there was no theatrical flourish. It was a room full of people being told what CATL was actually going to be building. It was the suppliers conference. So of course, they're not trying to you know hype everything up or anything. So what they said was in 2025, it would be the year of readiness for a big, the next big stage in their, their business career. So uh, production lines running, sales will be leaving factories in big amounts, industrial scale, they say. Certification completed as well. That was obviously 2025 last year, as they even, I think they made a video about that. Early commercial use cases established and then beginning in 2026, sodium ion batteries would move into large scale deployment across multiple sectors. I was also chatting with the uh, editor of Elbilen, Dot se. It's uh, the Swedish website for car news, basically, and it's uh, about the rollout of uh, CATL's new batteries. Just a brief few messages. Bloody brilliant website. I do recommend you go check it out. It's a, it's a very good website. I think they're based in uh, maybe Stockholm or something like that, I think. Uh, so they described sodium iron 
and uh, lithium-ion as progressing in parallel. I don't think that's actually true, but I can't tell them they're wrong <laughs> because uh, yeah, sodium-ion, obviously, they, nobody really did much for a very long time. It's only this last, last four or five years they really put some effort into it. And so I don't think that's really parallel because, you know, lithium-ion phosphate batteries, for example, have been around for quite a bit longer than that. So with sodium and lithium each used where it makes the most sense. So passenger vehicles, commercial fleets, energy storage systems and heavy transport were basically all discussed, not as speculative possibilities, but as applications once regulation and supply chains align. What was striking was how restrained the language was. There was no talk of disruption, no grand claims or anything about overthrowing lithium. And, uh, you know, instead, sodium iron was really framed as infrastructure, uh, like as a, a part of the infrastructure in the next five years, cheaper where cost matters, safer where risk matters, and more resilient where supply chain matters. And that was really the undertone of what they were saying at that event a couple of weeks ago. And when a company like CATL speaks that way to its suppliers, it usually means that the decisions have been made and things are basically set in stone. One thing I've said before, and I personally know to be true, CATL for being, it is for being very, very accurate with what they say. So when they say they're gonna launch a product in February, it's basically, it's, it is gonna be accurate on time and they don't really, they don't sort of overhype things. So that's very good. So uh, yeah, this has particular relevance for commercial transport, a fully loaded British articulated truck or lorry, as the English call it, lorry, uh, typically travels anywhere between three to 500 kilometers per day, uh, not thousands, by the way. So real logistics are, are far more uh, prosaic than marketing brochures suggest with battery packs uh, in the range of three to 600 kilowatt hours, which uh, sodium iron can realistically support actually. Electric trucking for regional haulage becomes entirely plausible. I was actually uh, invited to go talk about this on the BBC recently. I haven't, um, haven't done that yet. I've got to do that. But anyway, routes are predictable. Charging can happen overnight weight penalties are manageable for like not even it's not overly hard and uh, the safety characteristics of sodium ion chemistry become extremely attractive when you're uh, moving tens of tons through towns ports and industrial estates so catl's sodium ion batteries then have already met china's latest national electric vehicle safety standards which are very very thorough and methodical uh, which come into force actually the middle of 2026 this year and place far greater emphasis on thermal stability, mechanical impact resistance and fast charge endurance. So this is not a symbolic milestone, it's actually what allows batteries to be insured and regulated and deployed at scale. And uh, yeah, what sodium ion really does though is something subtler still. It actually changes the economics, as I mentioned I think last week in a video. So cheaper, safer, batteries reduce the need for manufacturers to price uh, risk or even warranties uh, into every vehicle. And uh, so for example, warranty buffers shrink. So insurance becomes much more predictable. Supply chains become uh, boring and there should be no issues or comebacks. And in, in the industry, boring is, is a compliment really. And it's what makes people money. So sodium ion won't replace lithium. It doesn't need to really. What it will do is make electrification much more achievable in places and applications where lithium supply uh, just isn't the right tool. So sometimes the most important technologies aren't the loudest. They, you know, they don't chase headlines or promise miracles. They show up, do their job, cost less than expected and quietly reshape the landscape while everyone else is still arguing about specifications. And that in the end, is why all of this matters. My name is Ben Alexander. Thank you for watching. Thank you also to these people who are the channel members and, and for anyone who's bought me a coffee or supported. So thank you very much.